Falcus climbed the steps of the empty net to his room, such as it was. In reality, it was a glorified closet, a bed fitting snugly against the wall with a tiny window hanging above it. He placed his hand on the door. It opened outward into the room, hoarding what little space it had to offer. He squeezed past, shut the door, and collapsed on the bed. The sheets were damp with sweat and sea spray. Falcus was beginning to really hate the ocean. The way its smell clung to everything around it bothered him like nothing else, almost like the air after a day of rain. But rain held a special place in his heart, one he reserved for the great evils of the world. How many years had he spent marching through mud and muck, drying his soggy boots by a fire? By the nine hells did he hate the rain. He sat up, running his hand through his hair. Hells. Even that was beginning to smell of salt and fish. He was getting into a funk. This happened a lot. Usually when you left him alone without anything to do. Back in the army, there was always something to do. Drills, latrine duty, equipment cleaning, or some other mundane task. Falcus liked mundane, but nowadays he was given more and more time alone with his thoughts. Eventually they all led to the same place, that same day. It was raining, because of course it was. He and Hayes were... No, better not pick at that wound. Not yet at least... He realized, of course, that the day he would have to confront those thoughts grew increasingly closer, but for now he was content to just shove them into the back of his mind, along with all the other horrible things he's done. He reached below his bed, feeling for his backpack. It was still there. Good. He rested it on the bed beside him, doing a routine inspection making sure all items were accounted for. It was better to be safe than sorry, especially in Saltmarsh. The place was famous for its rogues and despots, and now it claimed Falcus as one of its number. Lucky him. He had hoped to keep a low profile, keeping attention away from himself while he earned enough coin to get Hayes off of his back, but he failed to anticipate how much he stuck out here. Rookie mistake. The three he met earlier immediately recognized his uniform. Hopefully, they hadn't pegged him for a deserter. Last thing he needed was a group of eager youths hoping to make some easy coin by turning him in. He hoped it didn't come to that. He found that he actually kind of liked them. Falcus finished with his inspection. Everything was accounted for. With a sigh... He shoved the pack down below, and then felt at his coin pouch and pulled out a gold coin, his only coin. He would have liked the extra one the group had gotten for their reward, but Falcus's morals won over his greed. The lizard, or whatever he was, had taken a hit for the group. A nasty one, too. That wasn't something that Falcus could just overlook. He began flipping the coin up in the air. Hopefully Kreb's next job paid better. He doubted Hayes would be pleased with one measly coin. Kreb said it would be a simple delivery to a different town. Falcus's mind immediately pictured a map in his head. He had studied one on the voyage over here. If he remembered correctly, the closest towns to Saltmarsh would be Amenskar, Mossstone, and Brost in that order. Either way, they'd be setting foot onto the tradeway, most likely encountering merchants and travelers along the way. And where there were merchants, there were bandits. He'd have to ask Kreb if there had been any notable attacks lately, and if so, the estimated size of the groups. Falcus didn't doubt that the three he had met could handle a small group of thugs, but an organized group of bandits would be different. Groups such as those often had a decent grasp on tactics, something simple glibness and determination just couldn't beat. This was all assuming they were heading to a town that was located on the map. 
It was extremely likely that the map Hayes had lent him was outdated. He'd have to ask Kreb if he had another one. And gods be damned he needed another source of information other than Kreb. He liked the man well enough, but the fat man's connections could only get him so far. If he even had any. Hells, his idea of networking was posting an extermination notice for rats. You're racking up one hell of a to-do list, Falk. Hopefully it doesn't get any bigger. Falcus spoke quietly to himself, rising to remove his leather vest. He laid it on the floor, locked the door to his room, and flopped onto his bed like the fish he had seen in the harbor. He closed his eyes to the sound of ringing bells, crashing waves, and shrieking birds, each one a lullaby leading him to sleep. Soon the dreams came, and with them a voice, Hase's voice. Remember this well, Falcus. I own you. There is nowhere on Faerun you can hide where I can't find you. Your life is mine to do with as I please. So convince me that I shouldn't throw it away. When Falcus next opened his eyes, it was morning, and it felt like he hadn't slept at all.